enjoyed most of Netflix's Money Heist or La Casa de Papel, especially with the clever and quick writing that made for an exciting and energetic crime series. Now, the creators of that show, they're back to give us even more of the Professor's brothers' escapades before they took on the Royal Mint of Spain. Berlin is now available, and it follows much of the same format as Money Heist, but does it present us with anything new? There are only two things that are sure to turn a bad day into a great one, love and a payday worth millions. They're what keep Berlin going through his golden years, a time when he still has no inkling of his illness and hasn't gotten trapped like a rat in the Spanish Mint. This is where he starts preparing one of his most extraordinary heists, making jewels worth 44 million disappear like some sort of magic trick. So even if you've seen all episodes of Money Heist and know that there was an arc that followed Berlin before he teamed up with his brother, this season of the spinoff show is with an entirely different team of thieves. Now, the format and the execution of this, they don't really offer anything fresh in the way of storytelling. We get high adrenaline and anxious scenes as we watch the protagonists just get themselves into precarious situations where everything seems like it's going wrong, only to discover that some inventive solution has been already cooked up to keep the gang out of prison, at least in the immediate. Now, the cast sort of mirrors those that we grew to know in Money Heist. We have the mastermind, and in this case it's Berlin, matched with a highly intelligent older man, Damian, where he and Berlin sort of share professor duties. Now, we also then have the young, hot-headed guy who can be immature, and also who can become infatuated with the beautiful wild card of the team. There's also the tech brainiac who sparks the interest of the other younger guy who sometimes makes rash decisions. Now, the love story angles in this show, they're overly prevalent, and they can distract from the storytelling at points. I mean, I'm all for the characters finding romance, but as the episodes went along, the focus tended to shift more towards them than of the heist or the escape. Now, one love story, it is pertinent to the narrative, and it does provide enough complications to make the arc intriguing. But there's still portions where the show felt like it lost the plot a bit and wanted to tell more of the romance than anything. Now, I like the characters because they all had levels of quirkiness to them and were each unique in different ways. Now, most of them barely got any backstory or development, which I don't think it hampered the plot, but it became noticeable when, I think it was like episode five, that the story almost stopped down to provide a ton of background on one character. Now, the lack of focus on all the other characters made it obvious that it was missing. And then the background that we got, it wasn't all that engaging or interesting. I mean, it was fine, but just not for the full stop of the story to deliver it. Now, the creativity of the heist and all the steps leading up to it, I thought were exciting. And there were more than a few times that I felt like my heartbeat was rising and I was holding my breath a bit because of the suspenseful setups and the situations that arose. Now, I knew from watching Money Heist that there would most likely be several scenes that contained some stressful sequences, but I was still sucked into the drama, and as some of the crap started to hit the fan, I was on the edge of my seat. Now, I do wish the show as a whole had this effect on me the entire way through, but there still are plenty of fun and anxious moments to maintain momentum and keep the story lively. Now, if you ever look at the cast list on IMDb, this one has some glaring errors. I mean, at least at the time of this recording. Now, the website lists Najwa Nimri and Itziar Etunio as both being in all eight episodes. <laughs> no, completely incorrect. And while I do love their characters from La Casa de Papel, they are not present in all of the episodes of this new show. Now, the series, it's eight episodes long, with the runtimes being between 40-ish minutes and an hour. And thanks to a quick and driving pace, it's an easy binge. But, you know, with that said, I still think the season as a whole is longer than it requires. At least one full episode could be cut out without any detriment to the storytelling, especially with the events that take place again in that episode 5. Now, while a small portion is necessary for future complications and arcs, the amount of time spent on a tangent is just wildly unnecessary. There is some excitement and fun, but overall, the tiny parts that are most pertinent to the whole plot could be included in other episodes to tell a more concise story. Parts of the plot feel almost forgotten in small ways. Now, one involves a French character of Polignac. Yeah, he's in a precarious spot, and some things are working to alleviate that. But then, he's dropped from the story towards the end. Now, I'm pretty sure what the outcome was, but we don't ever see the resolution, especially how it relates to the timing of other events, which is important to how pieces of the story play out. 
The ending, it also feels wrapped up just a little too nicely. And I'm not upset about the ending, but we're shown so much detail on all sorts of aspects of movements to then have resolutions completed as if by magic. I mean, it just made the story conclude in a, okay, we're wrapped up sort of way. So I think if you are a fan of the original series and it's been a bit since you've watched, the storytelling can feel a little fresh while also being very familiar. The heist itself is fun, but what holds the show together are the relationships between the characters and the complications they encounter. Sometimes the adrenaline is increased a ton, while other times suspense is slowly building. But with the character dynamics, well, sometimes melodramatic and even heightened simply for drama, they still make the players endearing and enjoyable to watch, even if they are the bad guys and we don't know a ton about them. I don't think the show is nearly as intense or cunning as La Casa de Papel, but it does make for an easy binge with action, romance, intrigue, and suspense. There's a bunch of sex, maybe a tiny bit of brief nudity, a lot of profanity, and a bunch of violence. I give season one of Berlin three and a half out of five couches. So were you a fan of the original series? Who was your favorite character in that show? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.